Hi, my name is Martin Newmark at HouseKnowHow.com. I'm here to talk about sump pits and sump pumps and tell you a little bit of an icky story that you're going to go, ew, at the end. And it was really, ew. Um, especially for me, because I experienced it. All right. <clears throat> the contents of this video are, what is a sump pit? What homes have sump pits and why? What is a sump pump? How water gets into a sump pit? When is a sump pump needed? How sump pumps are turned on and off? Where sump pumps should discharge water? How often sump pumps run? How to test a sump pump? When a sump pump fails? Sump pits and radon? And then, my icky sump pump story. What is a sump pit? A sump pit is essentially a pit or a hole in the uh, basement or crawl space floor. So what homes have sump pits? Sump pits are installed in homes that might have a high water table and homes that might have uh, groundwater problems around the home as well. So water coming up from below and down from above. What is a sump pump? Well, a sump pump is, is a pump that gets placed down into a sump pit that can uh, suck up the water that's in the pit and discharge it out to uh, the lawn around the home. How does water get into a sump pit? There's essentially a couple ways. One is through a French drain, which is a pipe that runs around the perimeter of the uh, foundation and drains water into the pit this way. So water would essentially run down this pipe and then drip, or in some cases run, into the pit itself. Another way water gets can get into a sump pit, these are more of a retrofit style um, sump pit. Uh, a retrofit style might have holes drilled in the side because there's been no um, uh, French drain installed around the perimeter of the foundation. So these are retrofit because of some water problems that are discovered after the home was built, during a flood. Uh, during really bad rains or snow melts, things like that. And so they'll have holes and, and water just seeps into the pit. And then, of course, uh, there'd be a pump installed to pump that water out as well. One problem I rarely see, but I have seen before, with uh, some pits and the French drain that runs into them, is I'll notice that the the, the pipe is running uphill into the pit. Well, this is a problem because if water, uh, in order for water to get through the pipe and into the pit, it the water level in the pipe has to essentially fill the pipe that runs around the foundation and then drip into the, um, the pit uh, once the ground around the home and around the foundation are already saturated. So this is not a very good situation. Uh, the, um, the challenge is, is to fix this, you have to essentially tear up the basement floor and uh, tear back to as far as the, um, the pipe is running uphill because you need that pipe to run downhill into the pit. Should this be fixed? It's that's a good question. It's tough. It's going to cost several thousand dollars, and is it ever is it ever going to be a problem? So that's a real hard decision point uh, for that one in particular, unless you're already seeing uh, structural damage uh, because of the water. Um, uh, would that need to be fixed? It's questionable. When is a sump pump needed? A sump pump is needed, 
Well, let me let me back up for a minute. Many new homes are required to have uh, some pits installed, but they're not necessarily required to have some pumps installed. Now, the reason for this is that sometimes uh, the home ends up not having any water in the sump pit at all, and so you don't need a pump. And sometimes the, the pit does end up with water in it, in which case you want to install a, um, a pump if the water level gets to within about one inch, um, that's my number, within one inch of the bottom of the lowest pipe that enters the pit. Sometimes you have a, a pipe entering low, a pipe entering high, and it's the lowest point um, on the lowest pipe that we're concerned about. If it's within an inch of that, I'd say go ahead and add a pump just to be safe. Now, if there isn't water in the pit and you still want to, you're still trying to decide should I put a pump in or not, you can look at the size of the wall uh, around here at least in Colorado uh, you'll you'll often see water marks on the side of a dry sump pit pit as to where the water has been in the past. So I would go to, to that high water mark uh, to to determine uh, whether I should install a sump pump or not. How sump pumps are turned on and off by a switch, but it's an automatic switch. It's essentially a float switch. So as water rises uh, in the pit, uh, when it gets to a certain level, we want the pump to turn on, pump the water out and the water level down, and then turn off. So it's an on, off, on, off as water comes in and out of the pit itself. There's essentially two types. This, I, this type I think of as a bulb on a wire switch where as this bulb pivots up it will there's a switch inside it that will uh, turn the pump on and as the float comes down it will turn off now this uh, the length of this arm here is adjustable at this spot you can loosen this screw here make this uh, longer and shorter and that will change the throw of uh, when the pump turns on and off. The other thing is this particular type of pump needs to be adjusted so that this uh, float doesn't uh, get hung up on the walls of the pit or piping for the pump, or wires for the pump, or debris that's in the pit, things like that. Another style of pump activation is this, where you have a float that's on a lever arm, and the switch is actually inside this housing. As the water goes up, uh, this float is going to come up, turn it on, and as it goes down, it'll turn off. Same as the other one, but the action here is more contained. It's just up and down, up and down. It's not swinging uh, like that previous uh, sump pump switch. I like these a little better because I don't worry about that bulb getting hung up and not turning the pump on or uh, preventing the pump from actually turning off and burning itself out. However, the throw on this, the distance this is going to move, is going to be only a couple inches. Whereas this can be several inches. Okay. The, um, the other thing to think about is... that since we want this pump to turn on before water gets to the bottom of the lowest pipe in the pit, we may need a pump that uh, has a very short throw. 
and so in this type of a pit this pump may not work because that water is going to get pretty deep before that pump comes on and we don't want that so we put this type of a pump in there where it turns on much more uh, well lower in the uh, in the pit where should sump pumps discharge water the answer is to grade uh, and what I mean by to grade is to the lawn outside the home uh, the water that comes into a sump pit is essentially groundwater and that's where it should be returned to is the ground uh, once in a great while I'll see sump pumps uh, discharging water into the sanitary sewer, the regular drain uh, of the home where the toilet water and sink water, shower water goes. That's wrong because the, muni the municipal um, uh, water treatment plant is not capable of treating uh, all the water that comes out of sump pits around the town. Um, so that's that's a big problem and it should be fixed in any home where uh, water is being dumped to the uh, sanitary sewer. How often do sump pumps run? It depends. It depends on how much water is flowing into them. Um, after a snow melt or during a snow melt or after a very big rain, sump pumps might run quite frequently. If your sump pump is running more frequently than you would like uh, or you think is normal, what you can do is check and see how uh, low the pump is down in the pit. If there's, if, if the pump activates uh, before that water line gets to the bottom of the lower uh, input pipe, into the pit, you could put the pump on a couple bricks or something like that to raise it up so that it activates at a little higher level and this may stop your pit from running more frequently. How to test a, uh, a sump pump. What I use when I'm doing my inspections is a telescoping uh, like pointer but it's got a hook on the end of it and I'll reach down and hook on to I'll reach down and hook on to the, uh, the hose or wire going to the bulb and I'll just pull it up. Uh, that's most common. When I find when I find a pump like this I will uh, use the same tool and I'll just hook onto this little arm here and pull it up uh, to test the, the pump. Uh, sometimes you can't test a sump pump uh, because there's a, uh, a cover installed. Well, one way that you could test your pump also if you can't uh, reach the, um, uh, the switch is to pour water into it or run water into it from a garden hose until it activates. Sometimes your uh, sump pit will have a seal over the top of it as a part of a radon mitigation system. If that's the case it's very difficult to uh, actually do a test unless you uh, break that seal and remove the cover or uh, you could drill a hole um, into the top of the seal uh, run water down through the hole and then seal that hole when you're done. What happens when a sump pump fails? Well, ideally you want to fix it, but how do you know that it's failed? Uh, in most cases you won't know it other than not hearing it. Uh, it'd probably be a good idea to install, there, there are actually switches or uh, alarms for when water comes up to a certain level in the uh, sump pit and you could you could hang or put one of those uh, 
alarms just above where the sump pump normally activates. That'd be a really good idea. Most sump pumps in some pits don't have those alarms. The other thing to consider is uh, what if this pump is needed for um, just maintaining the home uh, the way it is. Like if the, if the uh, pump fails, then water's gonna come into the home. Well, that's rare, but in some cases I've seen a, an actual backup pump where uh, the first pump is down inside the pit and another uh, pump, a new pump, is installed above that with its own switching mechanism so that if the first pump fails, the second pump kicks in. You can also have battery backups. You can have another type of backup pump that is actually operated by water pressure if you're uh, there's a power failure. Uh, so there are different ways to manage that. Most of the time, it's not managed. Uh, and those management, those backup systems are only put in usually once somebody's already had a problem uh, once before. All right, some pits and radon. Radon is a gas that comes out of our soils and into our homes uh, through our crawl spaces, basements, slab floors, and uh, it, it's the second leading cause of lung cancer after cigarette smoking in the United States. So we don't want radon gas in our homes. What does a sump pump have to do with uh, radon gas entering our home? Well, if you look here, the uh, this pipe, the French drain that runs around the perimeter of our foundation uh, has perforations in it to let water in. Well, it's also letting uh, radon gas in as well if the concentrations are high in the soil underneath the home. So what will have to be done is a cap is put on when a radon mitigation system is installed, a cap is put on the pit. Uh, and hopefully there's a sea hole so that you can do an, an inspection with a flashlight afterwards. But uh, uh, yeah, those uh, pits need to be sealed so that radon uh, can't uh, get into the home any longer. All right, here we are. We're at the end. And I'm going to tell you a story <laughs> that happened to me. It's got to be a couple years ago now with a sump pit. It was a brand new home. I was in there and I was I was testing this, the sump pump. I reached down, uh, my hook down, pulled up on the bulb, turned on the pump, and it worked. It, there was no problem. Then, uh, all of a sudden, the piping shuddered. And it was curious because I, when you turn a, a sump pump on and off, the, uh, just because of the water starting and stopping in the pipes can actually shutter the pipes. Okay, so I, so I felt these pipes shutter and I was like, that's weird because I didn't do the switch. What's going on? And so I tried the switch again and I reached down and I hooked the, uh, the switch and I pulled it up and I got a shower. Uh, water just sprayed all over the place, including me. And it wasn't only water in that sump pit. Apparently somebody had an emergency and uh, had to pee in the sump pit uh, without cleaning it out. And so I was actually showered with stale pee and sump pump water. Uh, at an inspection with uh, no backup clothes and uh, yeah, I was in a brand new home. So I didn't want to... <laughs> I'm standing there dripping wet, smelling like a complete mess and I, I didn't want to run around this guy's house or try to clean up in this house. And my first thought was to go to the, to the sales office and uh, use a shower in their uh, in in the model home. Well, I went over there, and for some reason the bathrooms are disabled, and so I couldn't do that. So I ran back to my car, and I thought, oh my gosh, I have a uh, I have a jumpsuit, a white jumpsuit that I would wear in crawl spaces or attics. 
and I grab that and I also carry a little bottle of uh, uh, hand soap that I use to wash my hands at the end of an inspection. <laughs> so I took those and I have a towel, uh, a small hand towel that I use to dry my hands after inspecting sinks and faucets, things like that. So I took my supplies, I went back into the house, I went into the bathroom and I, <laughs> I took a shower inside this brand new house uh, using my hand soap and I dried off with a towel and when I was done in my birthday suit I put on uh, the jumpsuit, the white jumpsuit, zipped it up and uh, went about my inspection. Now if you're wondering why the first time I tested that sump pump it worked and the second time I tested I got a bath Here's my explanation. When I went outside to uh, inspect the exterior of the home, I noticed the sump uh, pump pipe uh, blowing water out to grade and it was sticking out from the side of the house. Well, there were tire tracks right down the, um, in the dirt right next to this sump pump pipe. And off in the distance, I see a guy driving around in a little bitty bobcat uh, working on the foundation next door. So he must have driven his bobcat down the side of the house right as I was testing it. After I tested it the first time, he drove by, hit it. That was the shutter in the pipe that I noticed. And the second time I tested it, he had broken it and I got a bath. That's my sump pit story. Uh, soaking wet with stale urine. It was not fun. It wasn't funny. It was awful. But I hope you might be smiling and getting a kick out of it because uh, now I do too. Uh, enjoy. That's my talk on sump pits and sump pumps. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to go to houseknowhow.com and go to the contact page and fill that page out and send me any questions you like. Thanks for watching.